Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new, if you're joining me again, my name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, where I talk about all the crafty goodness that I've been up to over the past couple weeks. Today is episode 125 and I have lots of fun things to show you. I have a blanket cast on, finished sweater, some socks, so hopefully you are looking forward to this episode. We also have an exciting giveaway today. I hit 4,000 subscribers here on YouTube, so I want to be able to celebrate that with all of you. So my plan is to give away three skeins of yarn from my shop of your choice. So the way I'm going to do this is somewhere in the video, I'm going to talk about a word that I'm going to ask you to include in your comment down below to enter the giveaway. So make sure you're paying attention throughout the video to grab that word. At that point in the video, I'll also make sure to give all of the information that you need to enter the giveaway. So before we jump on into everything I have to show you, there are a few places you can find me on the internet. The first is birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily. And then you can also find down below in the description other places you can find me, such as Patreon and Ravelry. So let's jump on in. I think we'll start with what I'm wearing first. I did show this last episode, but I didn't put it on because I had some issues going on with the collar, which I have now fixed. So this is my port sweater. This was a test knit that I did for Ozetta. Um, and like I said, I had it basically finished last episode. I just had an issue. The pattern calls for a collar that's like really high, I think about four inches or so. I'll pop a picture up on the screen, hopefully, um, so you can see what I'm talking about. But on me, apparently, I have a really short neck. And I put that on myself and it looked ridiculous. So what I decided to do was fold the collar down onto the inside of the garment and just whip stitch it down so that I now have a folded over collar. So you can see I just whip stitched it down, nothing, nothing crazy. And then I reblocked the sweater just because this was sitting a little bit funny. And this is where we are. I am so happy with it now um, because I can see my neck. <laughs> I could not see my neck before and I was not liking it. Um, but yeah, if you want like a super detailed in-depth look at this sweater, I had it in last episode, episode 124, um, so I won't go into it too much, but I did want to show it on and with the collar fixed, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out now. So I'm actually going to do a really quick change because I have a second finished garment that I wanted to show you today. I finished my striped sweater. Um, this one has a long saga that we'll get into, but I'm so excited that it's done. Um, done enough. I haven't woven all the ends on the sleeves yet. We'll call it done. There's a lot of ends. Every single color change on here has two ends. So I've done all the ends on the body and I've woven about half the ends on both of the sleeves, but I was ready to show it and you can't tell. So we're good to go. <laughs> but this is my striped sweater. This pattern I did knit out of sponsored or gifted yarn. Just so you know, I want to be 100% transparent. Hobie Yarn did gift this yarn to me so that I could participate in their No Shades of Grey challenge that they're running on Instagram and TikTok. So this yarn was gifted from them. Um, but I got to pick the pattern and this is what I picked. So I guess I can tell you all of the colors first. Um, this dark purple here, I have to look at my notes, so many names. This is Bordeaux. Then we have curry, petroleum green, patina green, and cognac. So these are all from their Hobie Amigo line, which is actually an acrylic yarn. And believe it or not, I don't mind it too much. I haven't worn it tons. <laughs> we'll see how I feel like doing a full day in it. We'll see if I get really warm or anything. But so far, I'm quite happy with it. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get into the story behind this sweater. So to preface, I think I knit one size too big. You can kind of tell here in the yoke where it's puckering a bit. If I had knit a size smaller, I think it would be pulled a little bit bigger 
or a little bit tighter rather and lay a bit flatter. Um, I was trying to pick something. I wanted something really big and cozy. I should have known better because yoke sweaters don't fit me nearly as good as raglan or drop shoulder sweaters. Um, so I should have known that maybe going a size bigger wasn't a good idea. Um, but it doesn't bother me too much. So there's some puckering there. Um, but the other issue that I had, my original thought, and I should stand up for this. My original thought was that I wanted a full length sweater. I thought I wanted it to sit about here. And then I knit it and I put it on and I hated it. It was way too long. It looked ridiculous. I think because of the size of it, it just, I felt like I was wearing a dress. <laughs> so, or a, a, a moo moo. It was not great. Uh, <laughs> so what I ended up doing, and there is a video on Instagram on how I did this, but I wove my needle in through all the stitches right above where I decided I actually wanted the sweater to be, wove all that in, cut off all the old stuff, and then just re-put the ribbing on after. I hope that makes sense. Um, like I said, the Instagram video was a couple days ago. I might be able to link it, we'll see. Um, I'll look into that, but yeah, that's all I did. I wove in the needle um, right above where I wanted to put the ribbing in and then knit the ribbing again. So I'm much happier with the cropped length. I kind of, so originally my plan was I wanted purple for all of the ribbing. As you can see, that did not happen. And to be honest, I kind of like that every single ribbing is different. So that happened. <laughs> I have an end popping out. But yeah, I, I'm much happier with the cropped length. I think it's really cute with a pair of jeans. Um, I haven't tried it on with leggings yet, but I do really like how it fits with a pair of jeans. So that's good. Love the long sleeves. That was something else I was contemplating was if I wanted to do like a quarter length sleeve or a full length. I'm glad I went with the full length. I think they're really cute. And yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it so far. Like I said, I feel like I knit a little bit too big. I knit a size four. My bust fluctuates between like a 38 and a 40. Um, and I don't know, I don't have the pattern with me to say how much ease that gave me. Too much, I should have knit a size three. I, now that I have my knitting journal, I did make a note in there with this sweater because I know in a couple months, if I decide to knit another yoke sweater, I'm going to be like, you know what? I had issues with the stripes one, but what were they? So now I have that written down in my knitting journal that, hey, make sure you knit something a little bit more snug because you're going to have issues with puckering kind of up here at the collar if you don't. Um, but yeah, I think... It's fine. I could maybe like go and stretch it out a little bit, but then I worry because it's got a bit wider of a collar, I worry that then the collar is going to be too wide and I'm not going to like that either. So I think I'll just stick with the way it is and the wee bit of puckering. It's really not that bad. Um, and I'm happy otherwise. So I think I would knit another stripes, but like I said, I would drop down a size. I think it would be really fun. Um, Stacy of Stress Knits and oh what's her name I hit one of her patterns so I can probably find it Emily Curtis um she what is her design Gently Chaotic Knits on YouTube um they both knit striped sweaters and they made the stripes thinner on it and I thought it was really really cute um now I'd have even more ends to weave in but I think it would be a really fun way to use up scraps or they both use theirs with their advent calendar which I thought was really cute too I I think it's a really fun pattern in that way to kind of play around with and you can really do whatever you want you don't have to have pattern stripes like me you could have a different color for every single stripe so I think that's really fun um the other thing that I really enjoyed about this is I learned how to knit jogless stripes another tutorial I put up on Instagram I've been trying to every time I learn something new or I try something I think you all would be interested in um I try to put it up on Instagram as a reel now so um can I show you the back while still talking? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> I don't know if you can see there, but you can't tell where the stripes start and end. It's hard to tell. Um, and it's also hard to show on the sleeves because there's a wee bit of jog just because of the decreases. That looks really bad, but I promise 
like these end ones there look pretty dang good those ones have their ends woven i believe um but anyways jogless stripes are really cool i really like them and it's definitely something i'm going to continue to keep in my back pocket because when you're knitting in the round every time you get to the beginning of the round you're at that one little step up so if you don't do this little trick for jogless stripes all your stripes have a little jog at the beginning so yeah it's it's something simple you can do there's just a little finagle with one stitch and it fixes that issue so yeah it's been a really fun sweater to knit i think i learned a lot with it um i learned a lot about fit and i'm, I'm happy with the finished product so that is my stripes i think i will keep it on for the rest of the episode um because this is the only finished object i have now we can jump into whips Actually, before we do the whips, why don't we do the giveaway? So, like I said, I'm going to be giving away three skeins of yarn from my shop of the winner's choice to celebrate hitting 4,000 subscribers here on YouTube. The word or code, I guess, that I'm going to ask you to put into your comments is STRIPE, S-T-R-I-P-E. Um, Bonus points if you can somehow put it into a sentence, but you can also just type it at the end of your comment. That's totally fine. Um, couple rules though. First of all, I ask that you don't say giveaway in your comments. That pulls in a lot of trolls. <laughs> pulls in a lot of people who really don't want to win the yarn, but are just trying to win anything and everything they possibly can. So please don't say giveaway. As well, I've noticed a lot of people having issues with fake accounts commenting on your comment saying you've won something, asking them to contact you on Telegram, WhatsApp. I don't have either of those. The only way I am going to announce the winner is on the next podcast episode in two weeks. So if someone comments below your comment, it's not me. Please don't give them credit card information. Please don't give them your address, your email. I would never ask for any, well, I would ask for your address if you won, but I would not ask for credit card information. I would not ask for anything like that. I'm not <laughs> going to make you pay for your prize. The point of a giveaway is winning the giveaway. So please don't contact or associate, talk to any of those trolls if they show up in the comments. Um, and as well, the giveaway, unfortunately, is only for USA and Canada. Shipping is still a mess and expensive outside of USA and Canada. So I'm going to keep it to just those people. I do know looking at my uh, analytics that that is where the majority of my viewers are from. So hopefully that is okay. Please also, I forgot to say this, um, but now that I'm going through everything again, we'll say it again. Please also make sure you're subscribed. I'm only gonna pick someone who's subscribed to the channel as a winner and like the video too. That helps me out, so yeah. Let's just uh, run through that all real quick again because I rambled on with some of it. Please put the word, did I say stripes or stripe? Shoot. Gosh, I'm talking too much. The amount of stuff that I am editing out of this portion of the video is ridiculous. Um, I'll have the word across the screen that you will use to enter stripe. I'm pretty sure it's stripe. <laughs> S-T-R-I-P-E, whatever is across the bottom of the screen. I'm sorry, I'm making this confusing. Stripes in your comment. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel, like the video, don't say giveaway, don't talk to weird people who are asking for your credit card information, and USA and Canada only, please. Okay, I think, I think we got that figured out. <laughs> so let's jump into works in progress. The first thing that I've been working on is a new project. I didn't bring all the yarn for it because to be honest, there's a lot. Um, but I cast on a Habitation Throw, which is a pattern by Curious Handmade. And this is where I am so far. So I have, because it's a blanket pattern, I figured what the heck. And I have modified it, well, not tons. Um, the main thing I did, I believe the pattern calls to use either fingering weight or DK or maybe just fingering weight. I'm not 100% sure. But what I'm doing is holding fingering weight double. Um, now I'm kind of doing a knitting no-no <laughs> and I am using singles for this blanket. 
um, which singles usually pills really easily and isn't as strong. Um, it's 100% superwash merino and it's only a single ply, so it has less strength to it because of that. Um, but my hope is because I'm holding it double, it will be okay. Now, I may come to regret that later, but that's what I'm doing. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I had a set of yarn from Woolen Vine Yarn. There were seven skeins, and they're all based off of the reindeer, so Dasher, Dancer, all of those. Um, and I really wanted to use them together in something, and I thought this would be a really fun way to use up as much as possible of the skeins. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> So yeah, Habitation Throw by Curious Handmade. I'm doing two pattern repeats for every color, um, mostly because I'd get bored if I made each stripe too big. So I'm making them small, but not too small. <laughs> um, and I've just kind of slowly been adding into this over the past couple of weeks. It looks cool that way. It has a really nice eye cord edge my face and this eye cord is done differently than I've done an eye cord before usually when I've done like a three stitch eye cord you get to the end of the row and you slip those last three stitches with the yarn in front and then turn around and start working back the other way um, but this pattern has a different way of slipping and I think it's made it easier for me not to make my eye cord too tight it feels relatively stretchy to me so I might use this again. Like that's got quite a bit of stretch for an eye cord. Usually I avoid eye cords because I make them too tight. <laughs> but yeah, um, nothing, nothing crazy about this. More stripes, apparently. Now that I'm looking at this, I've realized that. Um, but yeah, I'm just working away on this. I'm on what, the one, two, the fifth color. So I have two more to add. And then I will start over with this color again. And it's been really fun. Something really simple, mindless, squishy garter stitch. So really fun project. Glad I cast this on and that I'm using up some yarn that's been sitting in my stash. My throat has been so dry lately. I don't know why. I've been drinking so much water, which is not a bad thing, but so dry. Okay, next project I've been working on is a pair of socks. You did see these last episode. This is the yarn I'm using from Woolberry Fiber Co. This is her Anne Shirley sock set. And the needles are in there because I did finish the first sock. So these are the Stronger Than the Storm socks. This is a pattern by Emma Janet of Bloom and Create. I cast on the 60 stitch sock for this. And yeah, I'm just really loving the different way to use up a mini skein. Instead of just doing the typical heels, toes, cuff, there's some pretty color work. And then the toe is in the contrast color as well. I think it looks really pretty. And to be honest, something about a color work sock just knits up really, really fast. So when I pull it out and when I work on it, it works up really fast. Um, so I'm excited to have the first one done. I think what's been done to transition into the contrast color on the toe is really, really cute. And then get the color work a little closer for you as well. I just think it's really fun. So I'll be casting on the second sock soon. Like I said, 60 stitches. I'm now starting to use a two millimeter needle, a US zero for my socks. And I'm really, really happy with the fit. Um, my gauge has just really loosened up a lot over the past year, year and a half. And so going down to the two millimeter needle is making my socks fit a lot better. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah, I think that is all I have to say. I'm excited to cast on the next one. And then I do have, <laughs> after this, I think instead of casting on a new pair of socks, I have a couple single socks that need their mate um, that I'm going to pull back out and finish up. So I would show them to you, but I think both of them are secret test knits. I should be able to show them soon though. So keep an eye out, it'll be coming. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to a sweater. This is my Amara sweater. It's in my favorite Brooklyn haberdashery bag. And I am knitting this out of Explore Knits and Fibers, their Rockies DK race. You can tell I did some tearing out. <laughs> the cake is not as pretty and neat, but this is the colorway Fia. 
And I am knitting the size four for this pattern, but I am doing some finagling. I used the called for needle for the ribbing and then I actually went up, or not the called for, the needle I got gauge with, I used for the ribbing and then I went up one for the cables because I realized I just knit cables really, really tight. And I'm much happier with how the cables look in doing that. So last time I think I was halfway through the ribbing because I had just ripped out what I had done and restarted. So I'm glad to have some cables done. Those bobbles, I originally tried to do knit bobbles. Also didn't like how those looked. So those are in fact crochet bobbles that I have inserted into my knitting and I'm much happier with how those are sitting. I am knitting a size four. Um, it looks a little small now, but I know for sure this is all brioche here and that's gonna block out quite big. So I'm hoping this sweater will have some really nice positive ease. And then the sweaters that it calls for are like a balloon sleeve. So I think that will look really cute too. I believe the sleeves are all knit in brioche. So they're gonna be super duper squishy. Something else that's fun about this is that instead of having a split hem on both sides of the sweater, there is just one in the back that transitions into the cable, which I think is really, really neat as well. That Progress Keeper is from Hello Lavender. And yeah, not, not tons done on this. This definitely isn't like a priority knit right now, but I'm glad that I'm kind of back to the point I was when I decided it was time to rip the sweater out. So I will continue to work on that. It's definitely a project that I have to pay attention to. Like I'm reading charts the whole time I'm knitting it and there are actually three charts that I'm reading through and I'm at a different point in every single chart. Um, so that's interesting. I definitely have to be in a place where I want to pay attention, but I'm okay with the project taking a long time. I think it's going to be a really nice heirloom piece sweater. So nice neutral color, beautiful cables. I'm really excited that I'm finally getting somewhere on that again. <laughs> Another fun project that I've actually got quite a bit of progress on is my Anessa Dora shawl, a pattern from Larkspur Knits. This is her advent release or advent pattern for 2022. So my progress keeper, I know for sure is not where I was last time um, because I'm using it to mark the start of where my next repeat of all 24 skeins is just so if I lose my place, it's a little bit easier for me to count um, because I'm using all 24 skeins from my Stress Knits Planty Holidays Advent in this shawl and I'm holding it with a undyed skein of Birch Sock which is an 80-20, 80% 20, um, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon Fingering White Yarn. And this is where I am. So I've added quite a few more colors in. There's the start over or the next next repeat of my 24 colors. The rows are definitely getting longer now, but I believe once I get all 24 in a second time, I then start decreasing to shape it back into a triangle or it, it already is a triangle, but just to, to shape the shawl. Um, and if you haven't noticed, this shawl has tassels. There is not one end to weave in on this project. So that's been really, really fun. Um, I'm really liking the tassels. When I'm done the shawl, my plan is to block it, and then I'll probably have to go in and steam all of the tassels so they're nice and straight, and then I'll be able to um, trim them all so that they're the exact same length because I've been measuring them as I put them in, but they're not all exact. So I think that will be my best way to get them all to look really, really nice. But yeah, it's a really fun, simple pattern, stitch pattern. I have it memorized. I don't have to look at my pattern anymore. So that's really fun. I can kind of just pick it up and put in a stripe or two here or there and not have to pay too much attention. And I'm surprised I'm enjoying a shawl so much.
because I haven't really been in a shawl mode for a long, long time. So fun pattern. There's so many different ways you can knit it up too. Like you don't have to stripe it the way I am. I don't know. The pattern has lots of, I think there's three options of how you can orient or place your colors in here for stripes. So I think that's really great as well. You can definitely cater it to what you want and what you have to use up. I think there's even a version to just use two colors instead of using up advent skeins. So that's fun. This bag, I don't think I said, but it's very, very cute. Um, and I always forget who it's by. Knits from Michigan Woods. The only other project that I put significant work into is my downtown hoodie. It's a pattern I'm testing for Tori U. And it's really cute. I'm so pleased with the colors I dyed up for this. I think they're working out really, really well. And I am getting quite far on the body. I think I really only have a few more inches of stockinette left on the body. And then I'll put in the ribbing. And then the next step is to add the hood, which I'm quite excited about. I've never knit a hood before, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but the next step is to add in the hood. So the yarn I'm using for this, these are both from the shop, Birch and Lily Fiber Co. I don't think I've released this one in the shop yet. If you're interested in it, send me an email or a DM on Instagram and I'll happily dye some up for you. But this here is Birch DK, so our 100% Superwash Merino base in DK weight um, in the colorway Graphite. And then the other color in here in the stripes is same base in the colorway Jaredale. That was from our fall collection this past 2020. So I just, yeah, it's so cute. I can't wait until I put the hood on it. And then the sleeves also have these stripes on it too. So they line up um, quite nicely. It's really cute. I'm so happy with it. I, I love that I picked a neutral color too with a, like a little pop in the stripes so that I think it will match with a lot of stuff. I think it'll look really cute with a pair of jeans. You can't see my jeans. I'm trying to, <laughs> that's awkward. We're gonna stop doing that. Um, but I think it'll look really good with a pair of jeans and yeah. So I think once I get to about the point where the pattern calls for me to put the ribbing in, I'll probably put this on a pair of these little cableys and try it on and just make sure I like where it's hitting on my waist, especially since I had issues with that stripes sweater um, being way too long. So I want to make sure that I get this to the perfect length. So yeah, I am testing this for Tori. I'm knitting the size three and I think I'm due to have this finished by the beginning of March. So I'm assuming it will come out in the first couple weeks of March. Yeah. Very, very pleased with that as well. So that is all I have written in my notes for this episode. I've been trying to be a little bit more monogamous, but as you know, that's really, really hard for me. So yeah, this, this has been my main focus piece because it has a deadline. And then I've kind of just been working on other things sporadically when I need a change. So it's been a good past couple weeks of knitting. Um, before I leave you, make sure you don't forget to enter the giveaway. Where does stripe? Don't reply to weird comments. Don't say giveaway. USA, Canada. And be subscribed. I think that's everything. And like the video. Definitely enter that if you're a subscriber and you're interested in winning some free yarn. And if you haven't subscribed and you don't want to enter, you can still subscribe. It would help me out a lot. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again in two weeks with another podcast episode. And after this, I'm going to be filming a special episode for next week, Tuesday. So definitely keep an eye out for that as well. And I will see you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.